In this video, we'll be discussing project two, um, where you will standardize NaOH um, the, with KHP. Um, so we're using potassium hydrogen phthalate as our weak acid, and NaOH will be our strong base. And our goal for this is to, to determine the NaOH concentration um, to four significant figures. Um, and so we have a simple neutralization reaction here where my NaOH, the um, electrons are going to reach out, grab that proton. These electrons will go back to the oxygen, um, making the negative charge on this oxygen now. And so when all of this base has consumed all of these protons, we will have the neutralization reaction complete where we're left with the salt and just water here. So you will be running this titration. where you have approximately a 0.1 uh, molar solution of NaOH, and you're gonna have a known amount of KHP in your flask here. Um, and at the equivalence point, the moles of my acid are going to equal the moles of my base. So again, I have a known amount of acid in my flask, and I'm going to titrate uh, until I've reached the equivalence point. And we're going to be doing this in a couple of different ways. Um, and so I'll discuss that in a second. So if at the equivalence point, the moles of my acid equals the moles of my base, then in terms of determining the molarity of any weight, Uh, I'm going to use the fact that I know the moles of my acid at the equivalence point that's going to equal the moles of my base. And then I need to monitor the volume of NaOH that I have titrated into my analyte here. We'll be doing this in two different ways. The first way you'll do this is with a visual indicator. And the visual indicator you'll be using is phenolphthalein. Um, and phenolphthalein is colorless at acidic pHs, um, and then it'll be pink at basic pHs. So you'll have your KHP with a couple of drops of phenolphthalein in here, it'll be colorless as you're titrating the NaOH, as soon as that light pink color persists, that means um, you're at the end point of your reaction, so just slightly past the equivalence point there. Um, and then you'll be able to collect the volume from your burette. And we should know the volume from our burette to at least four significant figures. Um, and we should know our KHP concentration or and the moles of KHP to Four significant figures, um, but that will depend on the calibration of the pipette. So that's the first set of data you'll be collecting. The second set of data will be using a pH probe. And the pH probe gives me an electronic readout of the hydronium ion concentration. Um, and so it gives me a sense of how many protons I actually have there. Um, and so you'll first collect some raw data. So you'll have the second time you run this, you'll then have a pH probe in here and you won't have the phenolphthalein and something will be counting the uh, drops of the NaOH. And so 
You'll collect some data that looks like this. And so we can monitor the pH will be acidic at first. Um, and since we are dealing with a weak acid, we have kind of this um, less steep slope here. And as you're adding NaOH, you're going to eventually hit the equivalence point where you've consumed all of the acid. And then you're basically going to keep adding NaOH and we'll see the uh, pH start measuring a basic, um, a, a basic pH. So the one way to process this data is just to kind of estimate where that the steepest part of that slope is. To get a more, um, another way to process this, um, and you'll determine which way is kind of most precise and most accurate, um, is you can actually take the area under this curve and do the first derivative, where then we can actually see where the steepest part of this slope is. And so the first derivative plot here, is my y-axis has changed from pH to now I have the change in pH over change in volume. And my x-axis here is the same. And so you'll be um, processing your data in three different ways. And so you'll basically come up with three different calculations for molarity. The moles of NaOH will not really change each time because that depends on the moles of PHP that you've added to your flask. Um, and if you're using your 10 mole pipette, you should be putting the same amount of moles in for all of these different trials. What's changing then is where you're getting the volume of the NaOH. So again, the first thing you'll do is the visual indicator. So you'll be just monitoring the volume um, based on when the color changes. The other two pieces you'll get from the pH probe, where one, you'll estimate the equivalence point based on the steepest part of this curve, and that will get you your volume of NaOH. Likewise, you'll process your data in Excel with the first derivative plot, get another volume that then you can plug in. And so then you will have three different molarities that you calculated from three different um, ways to collect data. Uh, and then you will perform a t-test and a 95% confidence interval. And you'll think about um, what you think is the most, uh, kind of the best way to do this. Um, and you'll also see what is the, not only the most precise, but will actually get you uh, the most true value. 